a methodology that that I use in uh, my trading room and uh, on my alert service to find the only the very highest probability trade setups. And uh, we do that by, uh, as you'll find out, by in identifying institutional involvement in trades and um, and market internals. And I'm, I'm going to go over the the software that I use to find those. Uh, some people may or may not be interested in that, but I'm going to go over the alert service and how we send out uh, the trades and how I find those trades uh, to send out in case uh, anybody who's on the alert service wants to know where they come from. I think it's kind of important to be transparent so you know that these where these trades are coming from and um, why they work so well. We have a really, really high win rate on these things and um, I'll show you how we get that. So again, welcome everybody. We'll be here, we'll be starting here in about uh, probably another 10 minutes or so. Anybody from the West Coast here today? I mean, I'm in Charleston, South Carolina, and um, here on the East Coast, where we finally get some cool weather. Uh, so, but we have people uh, in in my trading room. We have people from all over the world, um, just about every country. Vancouver, BC. Oh, cool. Duke, you're in California. We're about in California, Duke. Calgary, you got snow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, California, Fullerton. Okay, Fullerton, cool. Yeah, I've been out to California a long, lot. Um, Calgary, I, I uh, beautiful out there. You, you get the mountains. I um, we went to went to not went to Twin Falls, Idaho. Cool, Jay. <laughs> and um, I know another Jay from uh, Ohio, from Idaho. Um, my wife and I went to Alaska not too long ago, a few years ago, and uh, went to Vancouver to sail out of there. And that was it's really beautiful country up there. Quebec City, oh, I love it. We were just uh, we were just there uh, three years ago in Quebec City. I really, I really like Quebec. Uh, my, my favorite city in Canada, I think. I like Toronto, but Quebec, Quebec is uh, kind of reminds me of a uh, uh, European type type city. I thought it was really Beautiful. We stayed right near the uh, right near the uh, Plains of Abraham and the Chateau Frontenac, but it was really beautiful up there. And we had a my, my wife and I had a nice I had a nice trip to uh, um, Iceland this year. We took a, an eight day trip to Iceland, first part of July to get out of the heat here in South Carolina, and that was pretty spectacular. Uh, there was um, a volcano eruption about about uh, four hours after, right after we left, about 20 miles from the airport. So that was pretty interesting but it's a beautiful beautiful place if you ever can get to Iceland uh, I I encourage you to go because it's uh, uh, it's spectacular I mean just 80% of the country is covered by either glaciers or lava fields and uh, just really spectacular scenery really spectacular really enjoyed that and it was cool <laughs> it was, we, uh, we 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 actually sailed around the island and um, uh, we went above the Arctic Circle uh, for uh, one of the evenings we were going from one port to another, we went we went above the Arctic Circle and back, and we got a little a plaque for doing that. So that was pretty nice. Yeah, it's quite beautiful up there, quite beautiful. So we got some people coming in again. We're going to talk about. Um, uh, I have a trading room called the uh, Compass Options Trading Room, and I also have an alert alert service for feet, for folks who can't uh, can't be in the room or don't want to be in the room and have other things to do. But they want to find some nice uh, high probability trades uh, to to take some make make some additional disposable income each month. And um, well, I've had this room for going on two years, and uh, we we hit we hit usually uh, between about 85 and 90 percent win rate. And uh, I'll show you some of the results we've had. I'm also going to show you some of the uh, some some charts on, on recent ch stocks that we've done. And I'm going to show you the software I use to uh, to find these. I use a specific software. Along with technical analysis, and I'm going to I'm going to show you that. And again, the the software is available to anybody who wants to buy it, but uh, you don't have to have that to uh, to be in the room or to uh, to be in the alert service. But I do like to show everybody uh, the trades that that I take, uh, where they're coming from. Um, it's it's uh, I know anytime I was ever did an alert service when I first started trading about 14 years ago, 
I signed up for a couple of lure services, and and I I always wanted to know where the where the trades come from. When I when I got them, I'd look on my charts to see if I could understand why those particular trades were, were being were chosen. So I, I think a lot of people want to want to know where these trades are coming from. Some people don't. I mean, some people are. I just want to get the trades, make the money, and don't really care. But but I, I do like to go into some detail on on how I find them, so you'll know if you become a member of the alert service or the room, you're gonna see where, where these trades are coming from. And if you're uh, serious about trading, then you're gonna be very, very interested in the particular software that, that I use called the Compass System to uh, find the uh, these high probability trade setups. So we'll go over all of that today. I'll show you what, what some of our recent results have been. We've had really good results. Uh, you know, the, the summertime is is always hard. We had just a little bit of a slow month in, in, in August, but basically uh, every month, for, just for the most part, every single month is profitable for us, and some months uh, really profitable. So it's been uh, it's been very good. September was a really really good month. I'll go over those results. And um, October so far, we've started off uh, with I think six wins in a row or something like that. So again, it's it's a high probability trades. We're not taking you know hundreds of trades or 20 trades a day or anything. We're finding only the highest probability trades and taking those, and it allows us to skip the really really good trades that are just mediocre. We don't really want to be involved in any of those. So, all right, I'll be back in just one second here. We'll get started. I still got still a lot of people logging in. I just want to give everybody an opportunity. I'll keep the question box open during the presentation in case I I, I, I usually try to answer the questions at the end, um, so it, 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 there's more continuity to the uh, to the presentation. But if somebody asks a question that's you know maybe time sensitive or or whatever, then I'll uh, if I see that I'll I'll try to address it at the time <clears throat> to um, to try to uh, take take a lot of the. the you know, there may be something you need to know right then or it's important to know right then or you can't stay or something. So I'll try to do that. But most of them I'm going to go ahead and, and, and answer at the end um, of the uh, of the presentation. <clears throat> and I just uh, finished up trading here at four o'clock. So I'm just going directly into uh, into the webinar. I do trade. Uh, my trading room is open every day uh, from about 9.15 to, uh, to a four. Uh, and sometimes a little after four, I answer questions after four o'clock. So a lot of folks, a lot of traders in there, and uh, we look for trades all day long, looking for high probability trades. And uh, some people come in in the morning, some people come in in the afternoon, some people stay all day long. <clears throat> up to them. <laughs> Again, I'm trying to give some folks some time to log in. I see a lot of a lot of folks coming in, so um, I don't want to start too quickly. But you know, the first part of the presentation is going to be fairly uh, boilerplate. We have to go through a have to go through a uh, an SEC uh, cover our, cover ourselves <laughs> that we have to do. So um, disclaimer that we have to do every time we talk about this. So yeah, but I, it's uh, again I've been been trading all day. Didn't make a lot of trades today, but uh, Three trades, all profitable, so that was good. Kind of a choppy market. A lot of a lot of news, of course. Everybody knows about uh, the news um, of the, the uh, 
what's going on in Israel that's that's impacting, but it doesn't really impact the market that much. It has some impact on the market, but not an awful lot. Uh, the market is much more uh, re related to interest rates and the Fed that is what really moves the market around. And in case you weren't aware, we have a, what's called the PPI in the morning, uh, producer price indexes, which is a fairly significant number. We have producer price indexes on uh, Wednesday and CPI or the consumer price indexes on Wednesday, on, th on Thursday, and that uh, both of those can move the market because it's uh, it's two two measurements that the, the Fed craves great attention to. All right, so we got, again, we got a few, couple more minutes. I'm just we'll let a few more people log in here, then we'll come back back and we'll get right started. Again, thanks so much for coming to the to the webinar. I appreciate uh, I appreciate your time, and I'm cognizant of your time. I'll try to keep uh, keep it uh, you know relatively short, but I do want to you know want to make sure that I get the, uh, the, the wow, how how spectacular this the service is wow. relative to how we wow. find these high probability wow. trades. So I'll be back just one second. Enjoy. All right, so we will get started here. It's a little after 4.30, so I uh, won't hold everybody up anymore. So again, my name is Dave, and um, I'm with the uh, the Compass Options text alert and service and the live trading room. Um, and I've been doing this uh, trading for about uh, 14 years, a little more than 14 years, uh, full-time. I've been trading before that, but I've been a full-time trader for 14 years. And um, I basically trade, uh, as I'll talk about, Mostly options. I do trade stocks sometimes if the options aren't aren't aren't, aren't, aren't liquid enough to take. But uh, I do trade mostly options, and I take I take some some strategies that I will we'll go over. So again, let me go, let's get started here again. And um, again, I'm Dave Dave Wise. Actually, that's my last name. All right. So uh, this is the uh, disclaimer. All the signals and trading opportunities we use here, uh, we discuss here, are for educational and demonstration purposes only. Trading is very risky. So you should never trade with more money than you can afford to lose. And uh, neither myself or Right Line Trading are licensed financial advisors. So we won't be giving financial advice. And you know, there's a lot more to it than that. But uh, that's that's no problem. <laughs> uh, you can read that. I think everybody understands that when you trade, you can lose your money. I mean, that's that's what trading is about. And that's what the whole service here is meant to do is to protect your capital. All right, um, if you have a question at any time during this presentation, uh, you can go ahead and just put your name or number uh, and number into the uh, the use the question box or the chat box, and um, uh, or you, if you Skype username if you have that, and uh, Rory will give you a call back uh, in sometime after the after the presentation and answer any questions you has. They, they won't pass to you. They're not going to put any pressure on you to buy or anything. But if you have questions, he will be happy to do that, and you can just go ahead and put your your number in there, and he'll get back to you. <clears throat> on the uh, on uh, the whatever questions you happen to have <clears throat> that you want to get answered. Okay, so again, this is called the Spire Super System. Is here. That's one of the one of the methodologies I use. I'll cover that um, as we get into the a uh, little bit more into the system here. In fact, basically, I am tracking institutional money flow. This is what makes all the difference in the world. We're going to talk ex a lot about uh, institutional money and how you follow it and why that can make you a successful trader. And I also will talk about the Compass SMS alert service. I have a text alert service where we send out alerts for all of these trades that I, that I take. Um, and it goes, you can call it trades on the go. And again, this is what the, the text alerts look like. They come out on an SMS or text alert right to your phone, phone. It'll tell you that it's David Wise alert service and it'll tell you uh, the specific stock, strike price, how much to pay, et cetera. And I'll go over all the details of that as we get into this. So, all right. so. Let's before we get into this, let's talk a little bit about the market and what moves the market. And uh, there's, you know, the market is, consists of um, a lot of retail traders like myself and most everybody here, I'm sure, is a retail trader. So it's made up of just a lot of retail traders. Um, 
that we as as retail traders we can't move the market doesn't matter how many options we take or how many shares we take we cannot move the market we don't have enough financial ability to move the market even in groups but here's the institutions and these are the the big institutions like morgan stanley goldman sachs um, hsbc um, vanguard fund t Rowe price 401ks pension funds these these companies and these these big institutions they have billions and billions of dollars that can move the market and these are the folks when they want to move the market they can they if they take a decide to get into a position uh the, you're going to know about it if you can if you know how to find them and the hard part is knowing how to find when the institutions are in there but it's our job as a, as a retail trader to track the the institutions and follow them basically we just ride their coattails we're never going to be able to beat the institutions our job is to, to trade you know, with the institutions when they're in a trade we want to be in a trade if they're not in a trade we don't want to be in a trade because if we're not in a trade guess who's trading all the retail traders and all the retail traders are, are going to just cause a, a lot of chop and a lot of chaos in the market and we don't really want to be involved in that we want to be in something much much uh, uh, more trendy that we can we can ride a trend so that's what the institutions are. So our job is to follow them, and my job is to find is to uh, show you how I find these the fact that the institutions are in there and how we can follow them. And more importantly, when they're not in the trade, uh, knowing when the, the institutions are not in the trade is even more important because you may see a stock that looks pretty good uh, on a setup, but it's not because the institutions aren't in there, and we don't want to be in there. All right, so that that's that's. Uh, that's what makes up uh, the market. It's the institutions that are driving it. They can drive a stock up, down, any way they want to, whenever they want to, and our job is to find that. And I, I tell you, just a, a lot of people ask me, by the way, you know, how I get started in to become a full-time trader. This, this comes up a lot. Um, I'm in a Reddit community and I get lots and lots of questions. I get questions like this in my room all the time, um, how I became a, a full-time trader. And it's kind of an interesting story. I'll just briefly cover it. Um, I used to trade just just stocks quite a long time ago when I was working, and I would I would buy stocks, dividend stocks, and and I'd write covered calls against them, which is how I learned to to uh, use options. But um, I was working in IT and uh, trying to trade. <laughs> you couldn't really trade uh, all day long because I was working. But an interesting thing happened about 14 years ago. Um, uh, the company I was working for. And I've been working for several years. Um, I got laid off uh, two weeks before Christmas. Uh, they had a downturn, so I got laid off two weeks before Christmas. And it was kind of a good opportunity for me to go ahead and start uh, to start trading full time. Um, it was crummy time of the year. <laughs> it's not great around Christmas time. But anyway, I did start trading full time at uh, end of December. And then I, I traded all through January. Um, and then I, about halfway through February, uh, my boss, that uh, who I worked for, and the, we were in a cloud computing company, and uh, my boss that I that I worked for called me back middle of February and said, you know, we've, things have picked up again. We we want you to come on back, and um, it, it was it was really pretty funny because I I really liked him. He was a great great guy. We get along great. But I told him I you know I I appreciate the offer, but uh, at this point in time I I cannot afford to come back to work for you. Um, because uh, you know I was just I was just doing too good trading just in those those six or eight weeks and I could see at that point in time that uh, it was a good opportunity for me to just go full time and and stay that way which is what I did so it's kind of an interesting story how I get into uh, how I get into uh, full time trading everybody has different stories about that it is a it is a big difference when you when you go, go from working with a job with a with a paycheck to uh, to taking trade doing trading. It kind of forces you to become uh, try to become good at it all right so anyway so we're retail traders and uh we can't drive the market all we can do is cause chaos so when the, we're, we're just retail traders are in the market we don't want to be there institutions are in we want to be in there okay so let's talk a little bit about what i do in the room and what i do in the uh on the, in the alert service these are the strategies we use in the in the options room and the alert service so if you get on the alert, most of your trades are going to be coming from some of these. Obviously, straight calls and put. I mean, straight calls and puts. This is pretty common. These are the, probably the most common that we use. Depends on the market. But uh, debit spreads using weekly options expiration. A lot of people are familiar with debit spreads, but they don't understand 
how using weekly options expirations instead of going out several weeks is much more uh, profitable with a much better ROI than going out two, three, four weeks. So we do a lot of those and I have uh, in my room, I have all of the I have videos and all of these and how we do them. So um, it's uh, anybody can, you can learn to do how to do these yourself, but uh, I, I call them out, but you can learn how to actually make these trades. We also do what's called a time spread over earning. These are called calendar spreads, but I call them time spreads. And this is how we capture the volatility crush over earnings. It's the only kind of earnings trade that I take is a, is a time spread. Um, and it's, we, ca we capture volatility. And again, I have a video on how we do these things. We have earnings starting at the end of this week, starting up next week. So we'll be doing a lot in the next few weeks uh, with, with, with uh, time spreads. Uh, we've, there's specific criteria I use to find the, the, the ones that have the highest probability of success. But that, we, that you will get if you're on the alert service or in the room, you'll be getting those. I also use what's called a weekly at the money or ATM strategy to capture premium week after week. This is a strategy where I sell, um, I sell puts weekly against a, a longer dated term put. So you don't have to understand that, but basically what it does is it collects premium week after week after week uh, against a, a longer put that you put out there to basically give you protection. And uh, the other thing we, I do is the SPY super system for very high probability trades to catch SPY moves or the queue. Th this is on, only gonna be called out in the room. I can't do these by alert because they're too quick. Uh, these trades can only, will last you know, maybe two or three five minute candles, maybe four or five minute candles in the SPY. So those are not gonna be alerted on, but if you're in the room, you'll get these. And uh, they're very, very high probability trades. All right, so those are all the strategies that I'm gonna be looking at. I wanna just kind of cover some of the, uh, some information relative to the, the success we've had with the with the room, I'm going to get into some details on on how much how much we make on this, how, how, what our percentage win is, etc. Up front, and then we'll get into the details of how we how we're able to do this. So this is the this was the options com, compass uh, options trading room. This is from March to June. Um, they got, I'll show you the other ones. I, this is the, the March to June here, but we had you can see that our win rate. Uh, runs from here is 86 to 87 and a half percent. That's pretty normal uh, for us. Uh, but these were these were th four pretty good months. Um, we had a good month in July and September was a really good month. But these are the four that uh, that I, I just kind of wanted to highlight. And you can see the profits varied. This is based on putting two thousand dollars into each trade. Um, a high here of 8900 and a low of 4700. And that just depends on how long we we're able to stay in the trade, how much. How much losses we had and the ones we, that we lost but you can see that we're fairly consistent in the number of trades that we do you know in this case it's in the usually in the low 40s sometimes it will drop below that when the when the market's slow uh, just depends on the on the time of year uh and this this is just a i just threw this in here this is a detail um this is a this is a detail um list or basically an, an, an excel spreadsheet of of the trades i took from april 20th through april 27th um, and I just wanted to show the stocks that we took, uh, you know, what we get in for, what we get out for, and basically the, 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 what we had for percentage win rate. Now, these were, these were all winners right in a row. We actually had 29 wins in a row from uh, middle of April to the first part of May. Uh, but I just want, wanted to, to show you what we, what we to expect uh, win-wise. I, I don't have a service that's promising two, three, four, five hundred percent. That you know, that's that we we do get 100 percent here and there, but generally speaking, most of the wins are going to be you know 10, 15, 25, 40 percent, 35 percent, fairly consistently. This is what we're shooting for, somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 to 30 to 40 percent. If we do it uh, intraday, and a lot of these are intraday trades, some of them are overnight trades. But that just shows you what the what we kind of uh, did here with uh, with these stocks. You can see it was Baba in for 335, out for 435. That was overnight. Make a dollar, make 30%. So that this is a, a lot of what you'll get, what you'll see if you're on the alert service or in the room. You'll see a lot of these. You'll see a lot of these uh, these kind of trades. Um, Mark, you're asking um, how big is your typical account? Listen, the typical account is, is there is no typical account. It just depends on what your risk tolerance is, what kind of an account you want to have. Uh, I do a lot of overnight trades, like time spreads, etc. Um, and holding trades overnight so that if there's people that, that are on what's called PDT or uh, you, know, you, you can't trade more than three intraday trades in a five-day period, um, 
it's a called a pattern day trader, a PDT, then you still got plenty enough, plenty of trades to be able to uh, to trade without having to worry about PDT. But I, you know, most listen I, I, for anybody who's day trading really seriously, you, you've got to have somewhere 30, 35, 40,000 in an account uh, to day trade you know, multiple times a day. But I mean, for for PDT, if you have 10,000, that's that's fine uh, to to trade with you. You obviously are going to manage your risk accordingly. Uh, all right, so this, these are the main trades, and again, I'm just going to go over some of these. Uh, I kind of want you to see what what we're what we're getting for results, because I want you to be aware of of what kind of results we we get. So this was um, in in May, we had 37 wins, seven losses. So here we you can see we had some nice wins here. We had uh, this was a weekly ATM that I mentioned on Microsoft, the straight Microsoft calls here for 15%, but Twilo 46%. And uh, Meta 30%, Mitch 30%, Match and Gold here, and you can see we had a few. We have a few losses, a 46% loss on Etsy. We had this Alta loss here for 100%. That was a, a news event that, that get, gapped the stock way down. That basically took care of our options pretty pretty hard. But overall, we had a nice a nice month uh, as far as making money in May. Uh, this was the June trades. Again, uh, we had 37 wins, six losses here. And um, again, a, a nice 86% win rate. Um, and we had a couple of, you know, 24% loss on Amazon, 84 and plant. But but you can see that, that which, what you're going to get here. This was a time spread. This was a call debit spread at 45% here in, a, in Broadcom, 50% in TSM. So this is what you're going to kind of see. All right, so here's July. This is when I was in Iceland. So I was out for about 10 days. But again, 20 wins, four losses. And a pretty nice, pretty nice win where we made money, so that was good. And August was a very bad month for us. We had 25 wins, 10 losses. This is the worst month I've had in two years, and the market was really, really tough. Some, sometimes it's, it's just uh, it's tough to overcome. But I, I want to be transparent in all these things and see what we get. But you can see we had some nice wins in Alta uh, and uh, AAP here, Johnson and Johnson, ALB. So again, a, a, a decent. Decent month. We we actually lost a little bit of money this month, but not very much. Um, and this was our September trades. Uh, this was uh, a, a nice month for us in September. Um, we had uh, 22 wins, two losses, 92% win rate. This this was um, again we're very. You can see that the, the number of trades went down to, to 24. The market's been very very difficult to trade all year, but especially through the summer. So we cut back on the number of trades. We just looked for uh, even higher probability trades. And these are the ones we had here. See, we had this STX. This was a really good one we had back on the 5th of uh, September. 108%. This is one of our best trades. But, uh, you know, some good trades in here. Um, some small ones, some good ones. But, again, consistently, 20, 25, 30%, some 10%. But it all adds up. And we had a, we had 2,000 invested in each trade here. Created a profit of 7,188 bucks. And um, so that was that was a pretty nice September. And again, I specify a, a September trading results were outstanding and achieved in very difficult trading conditions, extremely difficult trading conditions. If you watch, if you trade it all, you've been watching the spy. You know, it's it's basically got into a nice bullish uh, pattern here in the in the springtime into the summer, and everybody was was getting long, and then it reversed immediately and trapped all the longs. Came down, it looked like it was going to be short, and then it reversed again up. And trapped all the shorts. So it's been very difficult, uh, but we've done very, very well. Uh, and this was October so far. Um, I just had five trades so far. And we actually had another one today uh, at, at Abercrombie and Fitch today. Uh, we took a nice, pro a nice profit at Abercrombie and Fitch this afternoon as well. But uh, and we had Tesla yesterday. I didn't put that on here. So we're seven and zero for the for the month of October. Again, small number of trades. But we're up about 2,500, a little bit more than that now. I didn't put on the, the Tesla trade and the Abercrombie and Fitch trade. But uh, the, so this that kind of gives you an overview of of what to expect from the alert service, or if you're in the room. Uh, this is this is uh, we're not making 500%. We're making we're taking one singles and doubles and just doing it uh, on on trade after trade after trade. Uh, and it's very difficult to find any place where you can get 85 or 90% win rate. All right, so. Uh, this is this is a. Uh, I just wanted to highlight these are some of the, the specific trades that we sent out um, on alerts, and, um, and again these are these are reflected in what we what we just see, saw there a little bit ago. STX was alerted out. Um, it was that was a two thousand dollar profit, so it was one hundred eight percent. 
Again, that was a 2000 invested. So I won't, I won't uh, spend a lot of time on here, but uh, again, these are the same things. And I think I hear somebody's got a mic on or a speaker on or microphone because somebody's got some noise in the background. Um, anyway, so anyway, so these are some of the trades that we, uh, the, the, that we took in the alert service. So this is um, what you see when, they, when the alert comes out and I'll show you exactly what the format of it is, but just to give you an, a, a kind of an overview of the actual alerted trades, here's some more. And so there you go, we had this Microsoft, this was uh, in and out the same day, in for 1050, out for 1250, 20% profit, very nice. And again, is the, the the price we paid for the options is just dependent upon the stock. You can see this one was in at 35, out at 45. Doesn't seem like much, but it's a 28% profit um, in the overnight. Um, dollar 65 out for two dollars the same day, 21% profit. And uh, this was another one overnight in at 64, out at 84. So a lot of a lot of these are are very reasonable uh, uh, premiums to pay for the for the options. And you can how many of these you take just depends on on your account size and, and your risk uh, profile, how much you're, you're willing to risk. But again, this if you had 2,000 of these, $2,000 worth of these, it created $620 profit. So that's those are the, those are what are the alerted trades look like. Now, um, the alert service itself, uh, what's it what's it for? It's designed for day trades and short-term swing trades. We're not doing any in, any uh, investing. We're not putting out trades for people to invest long-term in. I don't. I, you know, I don't do that. I don't say how how's this. You know, you buy Nvidia and hold it for five years. These are all for day trades and short-term swing trades to basically be able to make money week after week, month after month. Um, as, that's disposable income for you. Um, it's also designed for traders who can't watch the market all day, uh, which is a lot of people. Everybody's working. You know, you're busy. Uh, the the alerts will come to you, and you can you can uh, you, if you have your, your platform, you can go ahead and set the trade. And um, and I'll set a set an alert that shows you when to get in, when to get out. And uh, we're, these alerts are only going to be in the highest probability trade setups. And so you're not going to get a lot of these things. I didn't have any yesterday, and just one today. So you, you're not going to be bombarded with a lot of trades, and you won't have to manage a lot of trades. Uh, and these will be on the highest probability trade setups that I can find. And how I find these highest probability trade setups, we're going to get into some detail on. Um, I, I do this by identifying institutional involvement in the trades. This is the key thing, knowing when the institutions are in the trade and when they're not. And I'll show you ex exactly how we do that. And then I look at also, I have a, another piece of software that looks at market internals. Market internals are different than institutions, but it's also when they line up, it gives you a much higher probability. And then I do some, uh, some, some pretty detailed technical analysis um, to, um, to find the, the best of those best. I mean, you can find five or six high probability trades Then I need to dig down into it to find out which is the best of those uh, those high probability trades. Okay, so you're gonna be alerted by an SMS message. And again, this is our saying in the room, we skip the best, uh, we trade the best and skip the rest. Trade the best and skip the rest, very important. Um, and every alerted trade is gonna include obviously the stock symbol. It's going to include the strike price of the option, whoops. Um, it's going to include the expiration date, obviously, and it's going to play. It's let you know what the price to pay for the option, and it may be a, it may be a range. It may say, uh, like on I think on today we took the Abercrombie, we paid like um, 320 to 330 to get into 320 to 330, and uh, and the exit price usually won't come with the initial uh, with the, the initial uh, alert because usually I'm going to watch the price action and see what the stock does. We may get out that day, we may hold it overnight. But when I decide where we think a good price to, to uh, sell it at is, you'll get an alert with the exact same information, except it'll say, you know, uh, put a sell order, it'll say sell order at whatever price it happens to be. And I'll, and I'll tell you to make it good till canceled. So if you put it in in the afternoon, it'll be, it'll be working the next morning when the market opens. Um, so that, that's, that's, that's what you get. I mean, it's really a pretty good, pretty good getting the highest probability trades and you're getting told exactly which stock to take, how much to pay for it, what the expiration date is, um, and the stock symbol, obviously. And so that's uh, that's how that's how the alert service will be. Now, I kind of want to get into a little bit of how we get these these results. You can see the the results we've had. 
92% in September is really a nice, is really a good win rate. Uh, it's, it's, you know, we, it's, it's hard to, to, ma to maintain these, but we're able to do it month after month after month. Uh, so it's, it's pretty, uh, pretty expect, it's, it's a pretty amazing actually to me. And I'll show you how we do it. So again, we, how do we achieve these stunning results? We were able to identify when institutions are driving a trade and when the market internals are heavily bullish or bearish. These two things, these are two separate things. When the institutions are in the trade and when the market internals are uh, in our favor, bullishly or bearishly. Uh, and this is really not exactly true. We only take trades when both of those are in our favor. Well, when they're both in our favor, we're gonna get the very, very highest probability trades. But a lot of times, the compass system, which is the one I'm going to show you initially, is that tells us when the institutions are in there. If we know the institutions are in the trade and the market internals are, are not lined up either bullishly or bearishly, but they're neutral, we'll still take trades if the institutions are in the trade. Um, as long as we don't have uh, market internals against us, we'll still take the trade. But when they're both in our favor, we're going to get uh, even higher probability trade setups in, in the uh, in, for to take for 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 uh, these trades, whether they intraday or whether they're overnight. So this is how I'm gonna. I want to talk a little bit about the software that I that I found. And this is software that I've been using. Um, I bought this software when before I was even I had this room. I came across it. I was looking for a way to improve my my trading results because I had noticed that over the years uh, the patterns that had worked so well in the past. Uh, weren't working quite as well, and I wanted to know why. I kind of suspected it was because of all these uh, the algos that the uh, that these institutions are using now. And so I was looking for something to um, identify when the institutions are in there, because it's not that easy. It's not it's not a simple thing. So the compass system is the what I found that did this. And the compass system identifies stocks that are being moved by institutional buying or selling. I mean, it's, it sounds simple, and I'll show you how, how it finds it, but it's, it's, it's the, we're crunching a lot of numbers to find this. It also identifies stocks that do not have institutional buying and selling, moving them so they can be avoided. And this is really important. Bypassing a trade that was going to end up being a loser is really important because that's going to make a huge difference. And a lot of times you'll find stocks that look really good, but when, when you dig down into the institutions, you find... Yeah, the stock looks good technically, but there's no institution driving this trend, which means the trend is very suspect and can end quickly, especially if the institutions decide to come in and move it the other way. And then the dominator system, which is the second system that I use, um, it's going to display market internals and produces buy or sell signals when the difference in the number of stocks moving up on up volume and up ticks exceeds the number of stocks moving down on down volume and down ticks by a very large amount. So in other words, if you've got 800 stocks moving up on up volume and up ticks and 100 stocks moving down on down volume and down ticks, you've got a, you've got a huge disparity to the, to the bullish side. The market internals are pointing bullishly at that point and the dominated system will tell us that. If they're, if they're like 300, 500, 400, 400, it's just gonna be neutral and you're not gonna have any market internals in your favor, but as long as you know what the institutions are doing, you're, you, you're, you, you can take the trade. So those are the those are the, the two systems I'm going to kind of show you, and then I'll uh, I'll, I'll show you some of the, the charts from those. All right. So again, so again, institutional money flow. I keep harping on this. This is really really important. The the, the way to, to make money in the market is to obviously this you you got to you got to have some technical abilities, etc. But the way to know is is the way to make money to know when the institutions are in the trade, and when they're not. This is just you just if you're trading with, with against institutions or when their institutions aren't in, you're going to be in really trouble. I mean, you're going to really take a lot of losses. So the combination of the market internal dominator and the compass system, it's been the cornerstones of my success. And it has. I mean, this is what this is what gets me this this high uh, inst uh, winning rate that I've got. So um, you, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but these systems together provide a comprehensive view of the market. That's exactly what we're looking for. We want to know what the institutions are doing and what the market internals are. And this is, allows me to precisely identify when the institutions are influencing trades, engaged your overall market sentiment. These two things is what tells you when a trade is a high probability trade. 
I mean, think about it. You know that institutions are in there buying something, like Abercrombie and Fish, they were in there buying today. Then you, you have a lot of confidence that that, that trade is going to work because you're in there with the institutions. They're not buying because they don't expect it to go up. They're buying and to drive it up. Um, so again, this, this synergy ensures the, the, that I enter the trade strategically, which I do. And, um, and I align them with institutional activity and avoiding the stocks lacking such support. And that's really important. All right, so I won't harp on this. I'm making well-informed decisions. Obviously, I've got a high probability uh, trades that I take and my win rate shows that. Um, okay, and uh, this is, I'm gonna talk about the company system. This is how we find institutional involvement in a trade. It's, it's not that easy. What we do is we do what's called a triple screen assessment. And triple screen assessment is a fancy way of saying multiple time frames. So we're looking at four different things here, the compass system is. They're looking at momentum, really important. We were looking at the momentum on current time frame and two other time frames. We're looking at trend on multiple time frames. We're looking at money flow on multiple time frames. And we're looking at what's called the quant. And I'll explain the quant to you. This is unrelated in um, uh, for, for, like if you have Microsoft, I'll tell you what other stocks that normally trade 70% of the time or more, if they're moving in the same direction as Microsoft is at that time. And again, all of these are done across multiple time frames. We're not just looking at a five minute time frame. They all have to align. So if you've got momentum, trend, money flow, and quants all aligned across multiple time frames, the only way, basically 99% of the likelihood, the only way that can happen is if the institutions are in there driving it. There's no way retail traders can create this kind of this kind of information uh, without institutions being in there. So that's what we're going to look for, and I'll show you what it looks like on the chart that we do. Um, the market internals, the dominated, get into specifics. Um, it looks at five different indexes. It looks at the Dow, the New York Stock Exchange, the Qs, the Nasdaq, the S&P 500, the SPY, and the Russell 2000. And it's looking across each one of those indexes, and it's looking at stocks going up on up volume and upticks and stocks going down on down volume down ticks and identifies which indexes they're in. And then it looks at the whole overall, all of those indexes together to make a determination whether there's enough discrepancy between market internals on stocks moving up and stocks moving down to generate a buy signal or a sell signal on the dominator system that I look at. And if, if, they, if it does, it'll, it'll pop in a, a signal for buy or a signal for sell, and I'll know that I've got market internals in my favor, and then all I need to do is just check the compass system and see if I've got institutions in my favor. And that, it, it's basically just a checklist. When that happens, I know that I've got a, a high probability trade setting up, and I'll just uh, dig deeper into it and see where I want to get into it. Where do I want to enter? All right, so I'm going to show some charts of these. Now, the short charts are going to show you uh, the, the dominator system and the compass system uh, and how I see it. I have the, I have the compass system on, on Thinkorswim. Uh, it loads on Thinkorswim or it can go on Ninja, but I have it on Thinkorswim. Now, I don't trade on Thinkorswim. I mean, you don't have to trade on Thinkorswim to run the compass system on Thinkorswim. But this is the system that I have up running all day to identify um, what the institutions are doing. So this is the presentation that the compass system gives you um, uh, from looking at institutional information. And these are the, the different uh, indicators we just talked about. This is the quant indicator right here. This is showing you, this is Dollar Tree on a, on a daily chart. This is showing you what the other, other stocks that normally trade with Dollar Tree 70% of the time or more, are they moving in the same direction as Dollar Tree? Well, they are, they're red, they're all moving down. This is a multi time frame momentum. This is telling you what the, what the stocks are doing, what the stock Dollar Tree stock is doing across three different time frames. Since I'm looking at the daily, this is going to be the one day, the three day, and the nine day, and it's looking across all of them. And when it's when it's read across the board, it tells me that all of those time frames are moving down on momentum. This tells me the current time frame. What's the daily doing? The daily is just if you just look at the daily chart, this is telling you it's also moving down. And this is the bias or the or the money flow. Basically, this is telling this. And this is the, the one I use the least. This changes. It takes much longer to change. But you can see here that what we're looking at here in Dollar Tree, and we took this one short, you can see that the, the, the compass system is screaming at you that the institutions are selling Dollar Tree. I mean, and, and the, the nice thing is it's, it's 
crunching a lot of detailed information to show you exactly what's going on with the institutions. And we know this is a sell. Now, where are we, we going to take the trade is the question. Now, what we're looking for is we're looking for a, a stock to, uh, to get into a stock at like a compression zone. This, this shaded area right here is a dynamic compression zone that the compass system produces. And it's telling you that when the stock breaks below that dynamic compression zone, that becomes a good entry. So we actually took this stock here as it broke down on Dollar Tree, and then we just wrote it down and we get out on this, this big flush down here. Uh, but again, you see how bearish this thing is. And we could have stayed in longer, but we, we took profits. All right, that's, so that, that shows you the indicators. We've got some other indicators in here we'll talk about. This is a 15 EMA of an EMA. It's a, it's a smooth 15 EMA, so it doesn't jerk around as much as a regular 15 does. Uh, this is this is DDoG on a daily chart. Data dog. This was another one we took uh, as a short. Now you see, you've got a lot of different colors in here now. Now, so we're gotten to see some differences. Uh, as you probably determined, red and yellow is short, blue and green is is long. And you want these colors to align up. You want the you want the, uh, the red and green or the red and blue. Uh, sorry, the red and yellow to be uh, bearish. So you want the, both of the uh, all the indicators to be either red or yellow together or blue and green together. Now, on, on Datadog, you can see that it's, that it's coming down here. And again, you see the dynamic compression zone here, the shaded area. Dynamic compression zone is the stock is coming down. This is where we took it, right here. You see how this went from, this went from blue to yellow, from some, some buying to selling across multiple timeframes? And this is showing selling across the current timeframe. The quants are red. You get red and yellow across the board. This is where we took it uh, for D-Dog short. And we took it and we wrote it down here and we, we took profits right there. It came, broke out of that dynamic compression and made a nice move to the downside. Institutions are selling it. So that's where we, that's where we, uh, how we determine uh, the, the direction that the stock is likely to go based on what the institutions are doing. And I'll show, so, so I'll show you several of these um, so that you can see what, you, what you're looking for. But I want you to see how relatively simple this is to uh, to trade uh, based on what the what the compass system is telling us. Now this is this is crowd CrowdStrike and this was earnings right here. You see this this nice gap up here, but you know we were getting a lot of getting a lot of choppiness uh, in crowd. But the current time frame here was was blue to green across the board here on the daily. So I knew it was it was pretty bullish here. We were getting the multi time frame was was chopping around, but we took this really pretty quickly. We we took this trade when it when this went here on blue and blue on the daily, uh, multiple time frame, current time frame, quants of green, we took it and we took it overnight right there and then we took profits the next day. Because we were getting a lot of, it was going back and forth uh, with this yellow, we didn't get the blue we wanted uh, to stay there, so we took profits. I mean, that was pretty simple, but we had a nice had a nice trade in it. That's on the daily chart. Now we do a lot of intraday trading. Most of the charts that I, the, the stocks that I take are gonna come from five minute charts. So this was Amazon on, uh, on a five minute chart. Now, again, hopefully you can see here that we've got institutional buying. Um, now, the quants were, were moving around a little bit. They weren't quite as, they weren't, uh, they were yellow here, uh, but the multiple time frame was green. The current time frame was green. The money flow was green. The quants were just yellow, but, this, but the setup was pretty nice. And one of the other things that Compass System produces is these pop symbols. This is a pop out of the box symbol right here. It's telling you we're breaking out of compression. These are, these are good places to take a buy. So what I what we did was we actually bought this when it went from yellow to green on the five minute chart and came above came above off this 15, it bounced off the 15 because we're always trying to buy at support, sell at resistance. This is a support level. We bought this right here and we rode this up and uh, rode it up and rode it up and we, we get out up here um, as as before the momentum started to fade. And we had a, we had a nice profit in that. But again, you can see the green here. Even though the quant was yellow, I'm focused mostly on the on the five minute. I'm focused on the momentum here. Uh, that's really really critical. Because again, when Amazon, if you've got yellow on the quants, you got to remember some of the tech stocks weren't, weren't weren't as strong that day as the Amazon one. But Amazon was very very strong. All right. So that was Amazon. This is ENPH. This was a beautiful short trade that we took. And I, I kind of want you just to see how easy it is to identify when institutions are selling. All right, so this, this was the NPH right here. And um, you can see this, this, uh, this is a five minute chart. This, this pink line here 
It's called the BWAP. It's a volume weighted average price. It's something that the institutions use. Uh, you don't want to be trading anything short when the price is above it, but when the price is below it and you've got a good short, that's where you get in. Well, on this particular trade here, uh, this was about 10.45. We, we, we've got plenty of red, but the stock's compressing, and we're waiting for some sort of a uh, an entry point that would that would work for us. And you see this pop out of the box symbol we got here, and the 15, which is this red line right here, this 15 EMA. Okay, the stock is is getting a pop out of the box off the 15 EMA. This is where we took it short, and you can see that everything is red. Institutions are selling this. We took it short here, and we kept getting pop out of the box signals, and we wrote it down. Uh, I think we wrote it down to right about here. It's kind of lost momentum again, but that was a pretty nice trade. And you know, it, it, it dropped a, a decent amount. We made a decent amount on that on those uh, on those option prices. But again, it was very high probability trade. We had the company, we had the institution selling. Uh, Disney was another nice one that we had for a short. Um, and this we actually took here um, early in the morning when the, when it, when it broke down below the BWAP on a pop out of the box symbol. But you notice that the stock just kind of compressed. It really wasn't going anywhere. But while it was going nowhere, you notice that the compass system never gave us any indication that the institutions weren't selling that. The institutions were selling. And so we just stayed in the trade and then we get this little pop down here and, uh, and more compression stayed red, went down and then we get out right here. And again, you'd wanna be out when this thing turns back to blue, but that's, that's, the, uh, that's the institutional selling on Disney that we took. And that shows you uh, what it looks like. All right, and this is Verizon. This was another five minute trade. We took this the same day. Uh, pop out of the box symbol right here, coming off of the VWAP, entered to Verizon right here. Verizon doesn't move a lot. We actually get in for Verizon for 45 cents and we got out for 65 cents. Doesn't sound like a lot. It's uh, it's almost 50%, uh, it's 20% on a 45 cent entry. So that's a, it's a, you know, if you take enough options, that was a, a pretty nice trade. And in Verizon, you can take as many as you want. Um, and again, the uh, this is a breakdown below the VWAP right here, uh, which is where we took the trade on this pop out of the box symbol as a commodity compression. And we rode this thing down, we rode it down, we rode it down. This is about an hour and 10 minutes, and then we took profits, I think just beyond here. I don't, we can't remember exactly, but I know we when we I had a sell order in there at 65 cents, when we get in for 45 cents. So there is the, uh, that's Verizon. Uh, somebody's asking a question here. Wouldn't volume alone suggest that institutions are involved? They, it, that's not enough, Peter. Um, uh, volume alone doesn't doesn't tell you that institutions are involved. See, one of the things with with uh, with institutions, you can get volume, um, but you can get retail volume and, and institutional volume. But it doesn't mean that there's enough institutions in there to, to push this. Volume is it? You can. I mean, volume is 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 important. I mean, I look at volume when I look at my 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 technicals on the stock, but Volume alone, it just just it doesn't tell you that the institutions are in there. You you've got to know what the momentum is like. Momentum is 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 a very very important element of um, of trading. We use a thing called the Laguerre oscillator, but we strip out the the divergence out of the out of the oscillator. Um, oscillators have measure does they measure divergence and momentum. We strip the uh, the divergence out so there's just momentum in there. It's driving it, so we're looking at pure momentum. So that's that's uh, that's important. So again, volume does not. If if you're just looking at volume and, and thinking that you get a big volume spike, that that's institutions in there buying it, it's it, it, it's not necessarily the case. And you don't really know that there's enough institutions in there, or that it's even going to continue. This gives you a much better indication of what's going on. And this was UPST again. This was a another uh, five minute chart here on Upstart Holdings. Again, a nice, a nice long entry. Didn't really move that fast, but again, it was went from yellow to blue right here. Anywhere in here, you could buy this long, and it tells you there's no no necessity to get out of this trade, even though it's just kind of moving slowly. And then when it pops up and it hits your price target, you take you take profits. It's still telling you the institutions are buying the heck out of this thing uh, on the intraday. One thing I will mention is when I take a trade, if I like a stock like on UPST, if I like it on the five minute chart. The daily chart must be bullish for me to take it. It's, I have to have a bullish alignment on the daily chart in order to take a, a, a long, because I want to be able to stay in the trade if it moves against me a little bit. I want to be able to stay in the trade all day if I have to, and overnight if I want to. And as long as I've got a good solid daily chart, then that gives me the ability to stay in the trade 
overnight if, if I if I don't hit my profit target that day. Uh, and I have a, a good you know a good likelihood that it's going to uh, continue on up. It doesn't always, but but it, but at least I've got a good chance. If I took a stock long and the daily chart was bearish, I'm I'm trapped. I mean, I, there's no way I can hold that 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 stock overnight, right? So that's that's one of the things that I that I use. I'll skip by this one. Uh, this was Meta. This was a nice trade in Meta. Uh, again, bullish, bullish, bullish. This is a, a a daily chart on Meta, buying across the board here. They were just buying the heck out of it. You notice it wasn't really moving up very quickly, but it was moving up. It was kind of grinding up, and the institutions were buying this thing. Finally, you get a little bit of a pop here from about 295 to about 316. Uh, we didn't take it until here. See this this dynamic compression zone here? It popped out of this dynamic compression zone. We took it overnight, and we got we got out right here on this just overnight pop. It was a beautiful pop from, a, from about 12 points uh, on the upside on Meta. Uh, this is a spy trade. This is a spy super system that I talked about, and this shows you what what the setup on the spy super system looks like. This is the compass portion of the spy super system. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for, obviously, in this particular case, I'm looking for selling. So I'm looking for yellow and red on the momentum and the multi -time, the multi time frame momentum, the current time frame momentum. So I've got yellow and red. So I know I've got a bearish setup here on the compass system. And the stock is coming across. And you can see I've got a, this, this uh, line, this here, 50 is yellow, and then it goes to red. So I know this is a good place to take it. And then I get a pop out of the box symbol right here. But anywhere in here, you could take this short, all right, as a spy super system. But before I take it, what I'm going to be looking for is I'm going to be looking at the dominator system. This is the dominator system. This tells me what the market internals are and are they aligned with the with the uh, the compass system at this point in time. Now there's a, a two really important elements that are on the dominator system. This background color. This background color tells you uh, what this what the multi time frame trend is on the spy, and it's dark pink. Dark pink is bearish. Dark green is bullish. Light pink is slightly bear, slightly bearish. This is very bearish. So this is telling me on the SPY super system that I'm getting a multi time frame trend to the downside. So it's it's aligning uh, on the trend. And I've got sell signals. You see these arrows right here? Those are sell signals on the on the dominator system, telling me that the market internals are so so skewed to the to the selling side that it's I, I, it's enough to give me a nice a nice. Uh, cell signal right here and you can see everything's red down here this this is the actual market internals but if you go by this this is where you would want to get in right here all right so if i go back to the compass system you can see where, where the anywhere in here if i'm looking at this compass system saying is this a good set, setup for the uh, for the the super system and I, i'm looking at the dominator at the same time because i have it up on another screen and i see this it's easy i, I it's easy I've, I've got a i've got a spy super system set up i'll take it and I'll write it right down, which is what I did. And um, and then you know when it gets down here, I'm out. I'm not gonna not gonna wait for the thing to recover. And you notice it's staying red, staying red. The, the 15 is sloping down. Everything is in my favor. You get out. And you can a lot of times on these spy things, you're you can take you know 30, 40, 50, 60 cents off the options, which is pretty good. Some days they'll go all day long, but that's not the case most of the time. You know, you use some of these systems, these services, they'll show you these. Uh, these stocks that, that moved up from open to close and they had it all day long. That's 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 an exception to the rule. That isn't what usually happens. And if you've been trading, you know that isn't what usually happens. You usually get pullbacks and bounces and pullbacks and bounces. You're not staying in a spy trade all day long because you're not going to certainly not going to try to withstand this this move to the upside here. Now I, keep in mind, you see how this bounced to the upside and I got blue and green. But notice the dominator. It's red. There's no way I'm taking any anything on with a spy except short this day. It's below the VWAP. There's no way to take the spy short. It does not set up as a high probability trade to the upside ever on a day like this. Okay, so again, so there's the dominator system. Again, there's your pink background telling you this is multi time frame trend is down. Your signal is red. It's perfect. It's perfect entry on the spy super system. And again, you have to wait for those. They don't happen all the time. Uh, this is Netflix. This is when we took 20% um, profit in. You see how we got this blue, yellow, blue, yellow. It went yellow right here. We still had red on the quants and red on the multi time frame. And you get this pop out of the box signal off the VWAP. Again, you buy at support, sell at resistance. We're selling at resistance right here. <clears throat> this is where we took the trade. 
We wrote it down, everything stayed red. We just wrote it down, wrote it down, wrote it down, and we get out right here um, for 20% for profit on, 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 uh, on Netflix. Again, we were in about 10.30, out about 11.30 or so, about an hour trade for 20%, which is, uh, which is pretty nice, pretty nice. But that, again, you can see the compass system telling us that institutions are selling. We, you don't wanna be doing anything except selling this thing. Um, this was a spy trade. We have some people that trade directly off the compass system, off the dominator system. Um, this they they uh, this was a nice spy trade right here, and again you can see the multi time frame trend is red, bearish. Sell signals here. This is where we entered when everything went red right here. Took it right here and wrote it down to here, and that was a two hundred fifty dollars a contract profit for three points. Um, depends on how many contracts you got, and a lot of people trade futures off of this, which you can do obviously, uh, but that was a nice trade on the spy. Uh, I think I have a question here. One to seven day expiration, I can imagine on your day trades. Not really, Peter, my, my expiration dates on my day trades, I usually go out at least two weeks. Um, I, you, if, I go out to, uh, it depends when, when earnings are, but on a, on a trade that I'm taking this week, I'm, I'm usually gonna go out uh, to the, the 20th or the 27th of October, even though I'm gonna get rid of it today. And the reason I do that is I don't want to, uh, I don't wanna, if the stock goes against me and I have to hold it overnight, I don't want to get time decayed uh, too badly. So I go out, I go out two or three weeks. Um, you have to pay a little more for the option, but uh, I take in the money options and you have to go out a little bit further. Uh, you pay a little bit more for them, but it's, it's, you've got a lot more cushion there. If the stock starts to go against you, your, your time decay is not going to take anything, any kind of a, heat, uh, a beating like it would if you had this week's options. All right, this was a Tesla again. This was, um, this was a nice trade in Tesla um, again. Short, I mean, you can see. You should obviously now be able to see how easy it is to to identify when you want to go long or short. Here's a this is a five minute chart on Tesla. Uh, we had the multi time frame pretty much uh, red here, a uh, green, yellow here, but this was blue. So I wait. I'm not going to take it. I'm not going to take it here. I'm going to take it here when this goes to yellow and I get a pop out of the box signal right there, right off this 15 EMA, and I take it down. And you can see you keep getting pop out of the box signals and notice everything stays yellow or red the whole way down. And this is the end of the day right here. This we get in here like at 215. And this was the exit right here at the very end of the day, um, 355 uh, out right there. So again, everything, a lot of selling here, easy to see. Um, this was an overnight trade we took in Tesla. Sometimes I'll take overnight trades um, toward the end of the day if I feel like the setup is good. I had a nice setup on Tesla here. I had uh, pop out of the box signals, you can see right here. I had yellow and red across the board. Um, so I did take some puts on this overnight and we, we fortunately got a nice gap down the next morning. Um, it, it fell and we stayed right in this and we followed it down uh, right to here. And uh, went from 120 uh, overnight to 112 uh, when we exited the trade, uh, for, good for eight points, which was good for about six and a half dollars per contract uh, on the, uh, on the options, which is a pretty big trade. It's a pretty nice trade. And again, you can see institutions, that, that, that basically they're screaming at you that they're short this thing right now. And this isn't set up like this all the time. A lot of times you'll get lots of different colors. You look at it when you bring a stock up and you say, no, nope, not gonna touch it there. There's just no, no consistency uh, as far as what the institutions are doing. Uh, this was Oxy. This was the one we took, uh, this is a daily chart. <clears throat> we took Oxy, here's a, Break out of the box. You see the, the dynamic compression zone right here, and it's been, you see the the institutions are buying this all the way through here, but the stock's just compressing. Now we get this pop out of this dynamic compression zone here. We didn't take it here, uh, but we did take it here. This is the daily chart. Nice big candle. Now we saw this big candle, and then we looked at it on the five minute and tried to decide where do we want to take this trade for an intraday trade. So we're looking at the you're looking at the the momentum, the current time frame, multi time frame. You get, you get blue here in, in green, so it looks pretty nice. We get a pop out of the box signal right here, right off the 15 EMA. You see this 15 EMA. This being able to buy at support is really, really important. And uh, we, we, we took trade right here off this 15 EMA and uh, it just it moved slowly up and then it popped. And, uh, and we took our profits as it popped that we, we didn't stay past here. And it, it, uh, it basically did exactly what we figured it would do, which is the institutions are buying it at some point in time, this thing is gonna to move to the upside, and it did. 
All right, let's see what else we get. Tesla, this is, now this is one I'm, I, I show, I just wanna show, I use Heikenachi candles sometimes to find reversals, uh, confirmed reversals. Heikenachi candle is a candlestick that is made up of two different candles. Uh, you take two candles and that creates your one Heikenachi candle. And I have a video on, on how, to, how to use Heikenachi candles, how they're made up. But a, a, the key with a Heikenachi candle is if you're looking for, in this particular case, a, a bullish reversal, you look for candlesticks that have wicks and tails, or especially tails. And then you look for a flat bottom on the next Heikenachi candle. When you go from a wick and a tail to a flat bottom, that's a Heikenachi reversal. Because of the way these are structured, you can see that the, that the Heikenachi candles, so you notice how they all have flat bottoms all the way up in this trend. Uh, if you looked at a regular candlestick, you wouldn't see it like that. But the Heikenachi shows you that you've got a Heikenachi reversal bullish. When you get a reversal like this, it's bullish. It's taken two candles to create it, which means you've already automatically confirmed that reversal using the Heikenachi candle, and then it moves right up. And then when you get, it goes to the wick and the tails again, you, you get out. Now, you don't have to worry about the, the wicks on these, these things. Wicks on, on Heikenachi candles are actually bullish, where big wicks on, on regular candles are not bullish, but they are on Heikenachi. But I just wanted to show you that. It's one of the things I use in the room to identify Heikenachi reversals and to identify when to get into a trade. <clears throat> Another SPY trade right here. Again, I just I, I show a lot of these because I'm trying to show you what we're looking for. Here's a pop out of the box signal in the SPY. You notice this is a five minute chart. See the VWAP, the pink line, broke below the VWAP. Take it short right there and just write it right down here. You lose momentum, you get out. You notice it went right here, it went blue to yellow and then rode right down. Some people in the room actually take trades off of short when it goes blue to yellow on the current time frame, or when it goes yellow to green, uh, or yellow to blue on the on the on the uh, current time frame to go long, because uh, this is a this is a pretty good indication that we've gone from uh, an oscillator that's going up, coming down, telling you that the institutions are selling. So that's the spy. This was a nice trade in Meta. You can see over and over again, you see the same thing. See this breakdown out of dynamic compression on the daily chart. See how we went from blue to yellow institutions are selling time to take us overnight trade which we did on this and we took a, we took profits in it and crowd i won't go i'm going to go over a lot more of these things uh, i just kind of want you to see the setup this was a daily in ibm that we took dynamic compression zone right here pops out of the dynamic compression zone you take it long and up it goes and um, this was this was a nice trade on on ibm <clears throat> uh, i'll show you the uh, this is a qsr trade that we took um, this was QSR on the daily chart right here. See a nice daily chart, see how bullish it is? Go blue here, went from yellow to blue to green and you popped up and it's moving up nicely. So we knew it was, it was bullish. So our question is, okay, we're gonna do this intraday. So the next chart I'm gonna show is the intraday on QSR, that, that nice move up. We're looking, where do we take this? Okay, here's a 15 EMA. That's the colors look like. Well, we're getting red, blue, yellow. Now we go to green. We go to green right here, and then we get a pop out of the box signal right off the 15 EMA when everything is bullish. Com the compass system is telling us the institutions are in there. Up it goes. It follows this uh, this 15 EMA up, and we took it right here, and we just wrote it up, and obviously we're getting up right here. We lose momentum. We're out of the trade. And this was QSR. Now, on this QSR trade, I was also looking at the dominator system. It was a dominator system at the same time. Background on the on QSR, dark green, bullish. So I, so I know I had a multi-time frame trend, bullish. The, uh, the, the buy signals didn't occur until way up here, but I took the trade right here. You see this compression? That was the compression right here. This is the compression here on the dominator. I took it right here because the dominator wasn't giving me sell signals. So I knew the dominator was at least neutral. I, I might've not had the, the market internals in my favor, but I didn't have them against me and I had the compass system in my favor big time. So I took it right here and wrote it up. If you're more conservative, you could take it right here on the first buy signal and write it up from there. But that's how I put those together to, to find the highest probability trades. <clears throat> and this is a spy trade right here. Uh, again, um, pink, dark pink background, bearish. This is light pink background, bearish. Stock breaking down below. This is the 15 EMA on, on the dominator. This is on the Ninja platform, by the way. And, Dominator runs on only the Ninja platform. Uh, it breaks down here with a, with a sell signal, pops down, you take your profits. Just a very quick trade on the SPY 
off of the off of the dominator system. And another another nice one here on the spy. This was a long trade. Uh, you can see everything's green here. Background is light green, and then it goes to dark green. This looks like blue to me, but light green to dark green. And we, this is where I took it right here, right here on this pop of uh, the dark green. Everything is is giving me a buy signal and write it up. And you notice that even even though the stock pulled back, see how it pulls back right here. This is this is retail traders trying to pick the top and coming in and trying to and trying to sell this thing off right here. It's taking taking puts uh, or selling the stock and trying to drive it down, thinking that this is going to be the top. And meanwhile, the instant this is telling us we get buy signals here. It went away for briefly, but then it came right back one candle and back up it goes again. And they run right over these uh, these these retail traders trying to pick tops and bottoms. You really don't want to be doing picking tops and bottoms. Uh, Netflix, same thing, same thing. Like again, dark pink, dark green background, multi time frame trend, very bullish. Uh, here's compression. You could pop it here to get in, or you could get it anywhere along this on this on this day. You could take the take a take a uh, just look for a, a compression zone and take a take a, uh, an entry. <clears throat> and another another big one on the spy. This thing just cascades down. Black, by the way, is, is no multi time frame trend. Then it goes to a bearish multi time frame trend, and you could just take it anywhere on these sell signals right here. And off of here would have been a really nice one right off the compression, right to this uh, this 15 here, and drive it down. And take it, just take your profits on it. The spies, you're not going to stay. Generally, I'm not going to stay in those more than just four, five, six candles. And another spy trade here. So this again, this gives you a pretty good idea of, uh, of what you're seeing. This is the compass system. This is the dominant. This is the compass system here on spy, all green, lots and lots of uh, lots and lots of uh, institutional buying, lots of, of market internals going in our favor. Obviously, very bullish. So that's that's what we look for. Um, this is. I just want to cover this quickly. This is uh, when the dominated first system first came out, which last October, a year ago. Um, before that, I was just using the compass system, but there was no dominated system. This were the trades I took for the uh, from the last three months of last year, <clears throat> just with the compass system. I I took trades that didn't have the dominator in my favor. They weren't against me, but they weren't in my favor. And I had 129 wins and 12 losses for 90.2% win rate. Um, this, when the dominator came into came to being in October, these are the trades I took uh, that had both the compass system and the dominator system aligned at the same time, bullishly or bearishly, uh, the same time frame. 113 wins, two losses, 97.4% uh, win rate, massively high win rate. Very difficult to, to recreate that all the time, but that's the win rate we had on those three months. And again, there's not as many trades, of course, because you don't get this compass dominated system set up as much. Now, also the market was was pretty pretty um, uh, cooperative during those three months of the year, and that helps a lot. Uh, the, the market, if you get the market in your favor, it helps a lot. And again, so I'll just briefly go over this. We finished April. This was I told you we had 29 wins in a row uh, from the end of April um, th through uh, first part of May. That's I think that's our best win win sequence this year. Uh, worst is we've had three losses in a row is the, is the worst. Um, and again, here's the strategies we use just to reemphasize. Uh, if you're on the alert service, there'll be calls and puts. You'll get debit spreads using weekly option expirations. You'll get time spreads when earnings start next week. And we'll use weekly ATM when we have a bullish to neutral market, a neutral to bullish market. Can't do it right now. And then the spy system, super system, you get calls out in the room, but you won't get any spy super system alerts. And so okay, here's the alert service here we just told you about. This is what it looks like on your phone. Um, and you can take these trades on the go. Nice little graphic there. Um, this was our results this year so far. See, we had a lot of loss here, a little a loss in August. This was our August loss, but this was uh, these are our, our monthly for this year. And again, this has been a very tough market to remember that uh, I started this service in 2022, January. The first month of the uh, of the bear market, and uh, so this is the this has been pretty pretty successful. We're up now; it's it's more than that now. It's over fifty thousand. But in any case, and those are in two thousand dollars put into a trade. Depends on your 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 risk profile and how much money you want to put in. Obviously, if you put half as much as that, you'd have half as much. You put twice as much, you'd have twice as much. You put four thousand into a trade. Uh, again, this this is the text alert service. 
it's it's a the annual for the text alert service is 996 a year and uh you use the coupon code save 500 that'll get you 500 dollars off the annual uh it'll give you to it for 996 if you do it quarterly it's usually 396 a quarter you use coupon code save 100 and you will get uh you get a hundred dollars off you'll get it for 296 a quarter uh, annual 996 obviously in the annual rates is 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 a better deal of course than than, uh, than four times that but but it's uh, some people just want to try it out for a quarter uh, and uh, this is 996 for the for the options all right so we're going to talk about uh what we're talking about here this is for anybody and some people ask about wanting to be able to get the compass system and the dominator system um, together um, those two, because they basically wanted to trade, and they wanted to trade, and and, and trade with all the all the tools we had. So you can get that right now um, with the Save 1000. You can get both the pieces of software for 1998, um, and it's going to come with the Compass Trading System, of course, the Market Internal System. Uh, it's going to come with the Text Alerts for three months, uh, and you're going to get the Trading Room, my Trading Room, for three months for free. The trading Room is usually 149 bucks a month. So you get all of that. Um, for three months on here plus the two pieces of software and then you can continue with the alert service and trading room and it's your you know it's your pref, pref, preference if you want to um, it also includes um, a scanner i have a scanner that's in thinkorswim that's really really nice uh, that looks for specific trade setups looking at the compass indicators um, then we have a private discord chat room we have two professional traders in there who post trades during the day and answer questions um, the wise way to trade options master class module that's my the, the videos that i have i've got about 25 videos on um, the compass system and in indicators and how to use them um, the dominator system and how to use those how to use the compass and dominator system together uh, then i have i have one on uh, doing debit spreads using weekly expirations there's one on time spreads uh, there's one called top gun which shows you how to find a high probability trade and then look at some additional technical analysis to find out if, if uh, which of the best which is the best of those. It's basically it's we're looking for the best of the best. We find the highest probability trade setups, and then we we dig dig down uh, with the Top Gun information that. So I go over that, and uh, and I've got again I've got videos on all the all this, the strategies we use, the um, debit spread using weekly expirations, the time spreads, weekly ATMs, all of those. Uh, you have videos and all of those and you get full installation and customer service you don't have to do anything um, the sergio who's a technician down there or charles is a technician down there will just uh, take over the machine and load the software on there it'll look exactly like as mine does um, when it goes on your machine and you'll have it you'll have it exactly the way it, that mine is all right and these are just some some uh, some things <laughs> some people with it said how great it is in the room. Uh, you know, those are testimonials. I don't like to brag about all this stuff. You know, I, I think my my win rate and my et cetera, it kind of speaks for itself. So again, there's the Compass Options trade results. The one thing I will mention, uh, if you don't want to get both software, but you'd like to get the Compass system, which is the one I started with, which tells you what the market internals are, you can get the Compass system if you uh, if you let Rory know. I just put your name and number in there. I'll give him a call, 786-732-4656. Um, or Skype him at uh, Right Line Trading. Let him know that you want to get the Compass system uh, by itself, and you can get the Compass system for 997. Um, and uh, you, then you won't you won't get uh, you won't get the market internal dominated system or anything. But you will get you will get the uh, you'll get my room for a month, and uh, and you'll get the uh, the texting service for a month. So you'll get you'll get that for a month, uh, and you'll get you'll get access to all of the all of this over here, all of the uh, the videos. You'll get all that. You'll get the scanner as well. So if you want the dominator, that, that we want the compass system 997 for the dominator the compass system by itself. All right. So I think that wraps it up. Again, 1998 is the is the best. I mean, this is a really a good deal uh, if you're if you're serious about trading. I mean, this is a this is a really really good deal. You get them both. You get them installed, and you get the room. You get the tech service, and you can basically ask all the questions you want and you'll see you'll see this me being me using these in action every day all right and again if you have any questions put your phone number in here uh in your phone number and your name in the chat box or in the uh in the question box i think the uh chat the uh, uh 
let's see in the chat box here. Yeah, he's got a link in the chat box to uh, to the order 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 uh, for the uh, for the particular uh, service here. So you'll get whichever service you want. If you want the whole bundle, or if you want the text uh, the texting alerts, you've got there's there's links in there to uh, to both of those uh, in the Compass system. You can just click on uh, and you get those. And um, let me see if we have any other questions. Doesn't look like it actually. Nope, that's I think that's all the questions, and I, I try to cover them as we as we went through this. I hope uh, again, if you're interested at all, just put your name and number in there in the in the chat box or in the question box, and uh, Rory will get back to you and uh, and go over these. So again, uh, hopefully we'll see some folks on the alert service and in the uh, in the room. I'm in there every day, Monday through Friday, um, and uh, again, hope look forward to seeing you there. So again, thanks so much for coming to the webinar. I appreciate it. I hope you found it very useful.